President Mohammed Buhari has said that his administration will increase funding for the judiciary to enable it to effectively discharge its duties. Will more money fix the myriad of problems in the justice system? Joining me to discuss this uh, for the first time is Liberos Osoma, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much. And of course, we have uh, Francis Chilaka from the last segment still. Thank you for staying with us. You're welcome. All right. Uh, his government, on the one hand, is disobeying court orders. And on the other hand, is saying, I'm going to give you more money in order for you to discharge your responsibilities. Let me start with you, Boris. What's uh, your reaction? Like, like I told you before the program, you know, there are certain statements government make that I don't take seriously. Um, reason being that, um, you know, I look at the um, places where such statements are made, you know, the avenue where such statements are made. And uh, one of such statements was the one made by the president uh, during the validity session of um, just Sade Jumo, the erudite, um, retiring erudite um, chief judge of the National Industrial Court. You know, he's been able to turn the Industrial Court you know, around that's one of the fastest growing courts in Nigeria. Uh, and, and so it is natural for the president to make such statements in places like that. And then uh, um, if we're talking about uh, an independent arm of government, an arm of government that should be independent both financially and otherwise, and then another head of another arm of government, he's saying, don't worry, I will give you more money. It, it means that arm of government that should, you know, be an arbiter between the other two, you know, will be tied to the apron string of, you know, one arm of government. So in the event that there is, you know, an adjudication between both, naturally, the presumption would be that that um, unbiased, supposedly unbiased umpire will lean favorably in, you know, support of uh, that arm of government that is giving him more money. And so statement like this ordinarily shouldn't be coming from, you know, the executive arm. You know, it should be. I expected statements like we would try our best to ensure that the, independ the, the independence of the judiciary is totally upheld, whether financially and otherwise, so that the funds that is for the uh, judiciary should be, you know, charged to the consolidated revenue funds and then find opportunity of ensuring that, you know, more funds are created, you know, through budgeting for the, the judiciary and not um, the president doling our money for them. Uh, let me still take a reaction before we continue. <laughs> Do we have an independent, independent judiciary? He's a lawyer, he should be able to I'm tell coming. Us that. Do we have an independent <laughs> legislature? These are the two which questions. questions we should be asking ourselves. A um, few weeks back, I remember um, the speaker uh, saying he will report ministers to Mr. President if they, if, if they refuse to, hit, to, to respond. To, to appear before. To appear before. The, 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 that really gave me cold. Feet. And I'm like, what is really going on? We know that over time, the Nigerian judiciary has compromised itself, whether we like it or not. Let's say the way it is. The judiciary has compromised itself because what you have every now and then is one judge will give a, a verdict here. Another judge on the same case is giving another one in Abuja. One is giving another one in Oweri. So when you have that kind of situation where the same organization is speaking from two sides of the mouth, then there's a problem. So the problem is not even whether Mr. President had promised to give them money, which I don't know why he has why he said that, but it's like like we'll say, it's all politics. But the truth is that the judiciary itself is compromised. And they know that. And until they put their house in order, it will continue. Don't forget, we're talking about you know giving them money, but we should also say that the, the executive has refused obey the, the, the responsibilities you're giving the money to upheld you're not that's what I'm it. that's what I'm saying yeah. so you find a situation where you go to the judiciary you want to hold somebody down you want to keep somebody against his will whatever you say is national security the judiciary says okay keep him for 45 days the same judiciary is saying we're putting him on bail ordinarily what I expect the executive to do is release the man on bail you know, it's with another case. But you don't release him, and you're giving them money so that you can continue to hold them 
to ransom. I, but, I, but, but, I but totally away do not from, agree with away that. Away from the contradiction, isn't more money a good thing for the judiciary? That is, I mean, <coughs> fully funded as it is. Yes, more money is a good thing for every institution, ministries, department, agencies in Nigeria, um, including the government. Um, but the way and manner the money comes can be a problem. Why you need more money, but you know, you also want to mind the way the money comes so that that money will not compromise, you know, your ethics and standards. You know, so that's why I am saying that we need to be very careful when, especially at this time, where it seems as if, like my friends and colleague here has said, um, the judiciary is in the eye of the storm where the judges would give orders and these orders are observing breach and they are helpless to enforcing their orders because the people who are supposed to enforce the orders are the ones disobeying the orders. And then in some cases also, even some of the ways some of judges are, are, are appointed. But I won't sit down here to just use one brush to condemn all of them because there are so many, I've appeared before so many judges who are daily working hard to uphold the sanctity and integrity of the institution. But you find situations where politicians, the average Nigerian politicians, would corrupt every system, including the judiciary. Judges are drawn from amongst us. And, and so they are not from the moon, just the same way our politicians are drawn from amongst us. And so if the right tools are not put in place, to ensure that the administration of justice and the windmill of justice grinds, you know, surely and fastly, then we are going to have these problems where the president, Mr. President, becomes like a Father Christmas, who people run to for assistance when they need it, and then he looks at you and says, okay, I like your face, I will give you more money. And then looks at this one and says, no, 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 there's no money for you this time. Ordinary, our court system, it shouldn't be the business of Oh, should we build more court or shouldn't we build more court? It should be the business of the judiciary and the stakeholders to look at the structure and say, okay, from the number of cases that we are having, how do we ensure that we fast track the process? How do we ensure that we have more hands to deal with the process? Was the funds available to us to bring in more hands? And then where also, I look at the government, you say you want to fight corruption. You're fighting corruption, you're not even plugging loopholes, you are recovering money, you say it's fight against corruption. And then you look at the two critical, you leave the two critical institutions, the policing and the judiciary, you leave them come at us the way they have been. And then you expect that there should be a fast track process. You turn around to say that the judiciary is your headache. <laughs> and what is you know, your panacea for that headache. Nothing. You think it's throwing more money at Benny Way. Typical of us, throw money at problem in Nigeria. Minister, I'm, so it's Minister, unfortunate, really. Minister, I, I have a question for you. I'm happy you raised an issue that really touched me right now. Um, when we talk about finance in the judicial in the you know, system, um, I have a question to ask. <laughs> the, law, the judges, are they not earning their salaries the way they should earn it? Fine, fantastic. You, the, the same way workers are being on salar salaries is the same way most judges are on salaries. I can tell you that. But, but we've but saw, I'm the one not, asking the questions. I, I know. No, I have a reason for asking because okay. he said that the politicians will corrupt yes. the judges. Yes. And I'm saying if you Men are it, employed, it, it's twofold. So if you're employed by mm. a system, yeah. That you are being paid salary from taxpayers' money. Yeah. I know where you're going to. <laughs> They're being paid salary from taxpayers' money. Okay. You must have some sense of integrity. That, that's why. To that, no, no. Listen. Le, le, sorry. Um, le, that's why I, I, you took one and left the other. <laughs> I talked about recruitment, the way some of these judges are appointed. I talked about that. Maybe you, you, you didn't hear me when I said that. And then also, trade money are the problem. Do you know that there are criteria for everything? But in some cases, in Lagos State, for example, there was a time when the MBA was at loggerhead with you know, the judiciary over appointment of judges. In most states of the Federation, it's the same thing. Names will be sent you know, to the MBA for screening. And then they'll tell you, oh, this, this, these are people of questionable character that we do not think should be elevated to the bench, or that they are not good enough for the bench because consider the enormity of the the work there. And at the end of the day, these people still they still get there, depending on who is um, 
um, <laughs> sponsoring them. And then they give you some cases. They say, oh, the bearer is from me. Please, he will cope. You get there. So and aside the people, issue of funding, there are more fundamental yes, issues yes, with the very, judiciary. Very. The, what way are judges, they? the way judges are appointed is a key fundamental issue that we all need to look at. You, because you can't be talking about funding when you're not talking about appointments, first and foremost. And in some cases, you also find, you know, intimidation in some other aspects, where a judge gives an order and the state governor is breathing down the neck of the CJ. CJ. Why should judges be giving orders against us? We've seen it happen also. And, and, and so, and meanwhile, these are people who are protected by the executive. You, you know, so, Nigeria, in totality, a lot of force in Nigeria as an entity that is about to collapse. So once you get the opportunity, go grab your own before it collapses. And, and people that are ready to work are not giving you the opportunity to work. But people who have, you know, godfathers are the ones that will be given the opportunity to get there. And, and so they will owe their allegiance to these godfathers that ensure that they remain in, in, in the system. So it is not, us, it's not exclusive, you know. To the judiciary alone, it is also not um, happening. It is it's something you cannot say is not happening in judiciary. It is happening, and, and that's why in some cases these days you read a judgment and then you begin to wonder. You compare this judgment with you know judgments of judges of older. You begin to wonder. A judge wrote this. You, you know, you ask yourself, really, a judge. Of all the argument can verse, this is what he can deduce. And then you read some judgment, you're like, fantastic. This is, you know, brilliant. This is beautiful. But the next thing you hear that that's man who wrote that beautiful judgment is retiring in, in a few days. You, you know? let, so let, let me, these, are, these are some of the, the fundamentals that we need to look at. Look at, take the case of Onoge, for example. Till date, we have swept that one under the carpet now. We've forgotten. Whether he was corrupt or he wasn't corrupt, we're not even discussing it again. Because those who wanted him out have succeeded in pushing him out one way or the other. The lessons, if at all he was corrupt, the lessons that the take home for us that we would have learned from that process, we've forgotten about them until the next happens. Never so what are the take homes? Here. Nothing. Let, let, let me ask you from your um years of being a Nigerian and following the uh, political process and judiciary and judgment and all of that. Aside the financing, what in your opinion are the other issues that need to be addressed in a Nigerian uh, judiciary? Corruption. I actually had that outline, but I wanted... Corruption. You see, the whole system, the judiciary system, to a large extent, is corrupt. Let us not let us not placate it. Let us not say it doesn't. It, it's not there. Um, I've always said that we have two type, two laws in Nigeria. We have laws for the rich. We have laws for the poor. Um, a poor man would go and steal a tuber of yam, and a judge would give him five years. Another man would go and steal two two hundred billion, give and him a bill. they give him a bill. And then you you know somebody that's stolen two hundred billion, you're, you're putting him on bail. You you you're putting him on bail on fifty thousand or fifty five million naira. He will pay it and walk away. So we need to address our legal system very well. This is where the judiciary needs to wake up, to look at the judiciary system and say, okay, good. There must the synergy between the the, the judiciary and the police must be. Clear. All right, you, you are shaking your head up. I, I'm told we have yeah. less than a minute. To yeah, go. you know so why? Quick thoughts. It's um, if you're talking about corruption in judiciary, you can't discuss corruption without addressing the fundamental issue of recruitment. It's very key. Without also, let me tell you, Lagos State, for example, before Oshiba and Job became Attorney General, mm. ask him. These are stories he tells everywhere. Judges write with lantern. <laughs> Salaries were own. And so it was very easy for judges to collect, you know, once the matters they are looking for who will settle. But when the government came, the first thing they did was we need to address the fundamentals, welfare. After they did that, the judges and magistrates, about 32, were sacked in Lagos on the same day. The heavens didn't fall. And then you now discover that. Now they know that the government, after addressing all your basic needs, the government will just break down your neck. They want but the best. At least the, the agreement is that but, there is there are issues yes, to be addressed if so we need the judiciary but to. But 
pick up. Subsequently, and then they now also introduced what you call alternative dispute resolution, so that all cases will not just end in court. Yeah. There is give opportunities. So quick, quickly, just a few seconds. And so other states start copying. But when we just you look at the judiciary, you bring in some persons who are, I mean, we don't use the word incompetent, and you elevate them to the bench, and you expect that <sighs> everybody, everything will be a dorado. It can't be. I, I'm afraid that's all time will allow us to do this time. Thank you very much for joining us on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. And of course, thank you for watching. We'll go on a short break now for our Independence Day Plus package, where veterans speak on the experience of October 1st, 1960, and what happened afterwards. When we return, I'll give you my tweak and we'll close the show. You stay with us. I can recall that day, October 1st, 1960, uh, when uh, it was all announced over the radio and everybody felt happy and all we had, Nigeria is independent, they can now determine their future and everything will be okay. Uh, what I remember first were the politicians all looking being eager to deliver something to their people. And I recall uh, various leaders like uh, Azikiwe and Sadauna and Awolowo, each leading his own group and uh, riding in motorcades, talking to people. Um, and everybody felt that we're going to expect quite a lot from them. And uh, I recall the first budgets with uh, the finance minister then uh, uh, getting himself ready with his shrill, long tribal dress, going to the house to deliver his first budget for 50 million pounds for the whole country at that time. That sounded very big. And uh, but we were all happy and proud that Nigeria was at last uh, ready to deliver its uh, uh, his own fortunes. Well, I was born in 1963, um, and I mem my memories go back to us from about age of three or, or four, and so on. So, so in 1967, um, uh, you know, the Civil War started in Nigeria. My father was a foreign service officer in Washington D.C. as a young child, uh, growing up, and then we came back to Nigeria in 1967, just before the war broke out. So. Immediate, the few years after independence, my memories are, were memories of war, um, civil war, you know, going back into our village, um, eating grasshoppers and crickets um, during the blockade against Biafra, which was the eastern region at the time, which was trying to secede. Um, you know, a lot of happy images as well, but a lot of sad images. I remember my uncle, uh, my father's younger brother, being killed in the civil war, and I remember the funeral, and it made me very sad, you know. So um, the memories I have are um, very complicated memories. Nigeria had promised for a few years after its independence in 1960, the, the different regions were doing well economically, but the political crisis um, that began in the Western region in 1962 and the manner in which the federal government handled the crisis brought about a, a crisis that eventually led to a military coup in 1960. Uh, 66. So the intervention of the military in, in Nigeria truncated, in my view, Nigeria's path to greatness uh, on which it was already embarked. And by greatness, I mean economic um, you know, uh, development. That, and, and I think Nigeria would have been able to overcome its political crisis if the civilian democracy had been allowed to continue. A lot has been said about the Nigerian judiciary. I can only add that without the will and the right leadership, all solutions will remain in the realm of hopes and dreams. Thank you for watching. We will be back again tomorrow, same time. Bye for now and take care of yourself.